Welcome back, folks. It is the Ray Lucia Show with Steve Allador at LoanFinancialPlanner.com. You know, it's uh, probably your biggest investment, your home, and how you finance it is critically important. And every once in a while, you need to be thinking about refinancing. And right now, Steve allador has got some very interesting information for you. Steve, if you have an, an adjustable rate mortgage, is now the time to refi that well, sucker? You know, it, a lot of it's really too, it's predicated on how long you think you're going to be on the property. But an adjustable rate mortgages for the last 10 or 15 years, for people that have had them, have been absolutely wonderful because the short term rates and the short term yields up until about a year, year and a half ago were so low that those that had adjustables were paying a lower, sometimes significantly lower rate than those with a fixed rate. But based on the fact that the short term rates are moving up, you were talking about the inverted yield curve, we're getting closer to that, which would mean the, the difference between the long term rates and the short term rates are getting much closer. Um, right now, majority of the adjustable rate loans uh, is on what's called the LIBOR index. Lib- two things to be concerned with. One, LIBOR index currently is in the 2.8 range, and on an adjustable, you have a margin, which is the amount that the, the investor earns above the index. Well, what's the prime rate right now? Prime's at five. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. thinking prime was five. Is LIBOR still down at 2.8? Uh, Lib- the one-year LIBOR, the last I looked about a week ago, was in the 2.8 range. Uh-huh, wow. But with a standard margin, usually between two and a quarter and two and three quarters, but two and a quarter has been fairly standard. You're still looking over 5%. You're over 5%. And when and if the feds increase short-term rates, they're not direct. that's not directly tied to the LIBOR index. But we've seen with the Fed's moving interest rates up, that index going up as well. So you could find your adjustable the next year up in the mid fives or six percent range. So securing a 30 year fixed rate in the mid fours right now may be a smart move. So if you've got an adjustable, that's something to seriously look at. If you have a second loan or a line of credit, then, of course, we've all found out that in a lot of cases, if you cannot document that the money that you've used on the line of credit was used for home improvement, you no longer get tax deductibility on, on, that, um, sure. uh, on that mortgage. On top of that, <clears throat> most lines of credit are based on prime. So when the feds move short-term rates, prime will move in that direction, and equity lines will be directly affected by any additional increases in the Fed moves. So, I mean, we're starting to see lines of credit back again with marg- margins of zero, but, I mean, there are a lot of people that have margins of one, one and a half, or two percent above prime. <clears throat> now, if the Feds do, I think we're predicting four more moves from this year to the end of next year, and if they move a quarter point each move, that's another full one percent increase in prime which then would put your line of credit anywhere between 6 and 8%. So even if you've got a mortgage that's in the high threes or low fours, and you have a significant amount on the line of credit, a lot of times if we look at the blended yield, what you're paying sure. on both, it may make sense to go ahead and refinance both of those well, together. Plus, if you have credit card debt, you can consolidate it down, and then hopefully you tear up the credit cards, right? That'll save you some dough. Well, and that's that's the next topic, and you were talking about that with credit card debt going up. Just as an example, I'm working with a client right now, purchased their home a year ago, four and a quarter, 30-year fixed rate. Um, value's gone up a little bit in her property. She's putting in a guest home that's not complete, but she's got $60,000 in credit debt. House payment, credit debt, not leaving her a whole lot of cash at the end of the month, and on top of that, with all of her credit debt, <clears throat> her credit score right now is at 671. So we're looking at how do we manage her money on a conventional loan. I can only go up to 80% cash out, but based on her credit score, she's looking at a rate in the mid to high fives. 